Hi, this is Ted Bayhaus with Tech Rep Marketing. Uh, what I have here with me today is a brand new piece of gear that we just added to the studio. This is a fader port 8x PreSonus. This is a product that we represent as part of Tech Rep. Um, it's a really cool thing for doing things for the music world, and there's a million videos that are already out there with people talking about how cool it is with Studio One and Pro Tools and everything else. Um, we do a lot of video stuff here uh, in our studio. We do a lot of audio projects too, but really video is, is, is a big part of what we do. And um, I wanted to discuss the usefulness of this for actually using it inside of Adobe Premiere. Um, we're uh, Adobe CC guys, so we use uh, Premiere and Lightroom and all that for a lot of our production stuff here, as well as After Effects. So um, this actually works really, really well in Premiere, and I bet you a lot of people don't know that, and that's why we wanted to make this quickie video. Just to, for, the, for those of you who are uh, Premiere CC users, um, I wanted to show you how to hook this up and, and use it. Uh, we found it to be a very useful tool. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, Turn it on and plug it in and show you how to do all of the things to make this um, make this work with Adobe Premiere. Okay, so we're about ready to hook up the fader port. It's kind of a two-step process. The first thing we want to do is make sure the fader port is in the correct mode. Um, the mode that you want to put the fader port into, uh, you want to put it into Mackie control mode. And Mackie control was basically a control standard that was, uh, that's been out there since the 90s. A lot of different manufacturers support it in different ways. So anyways, to do that, you hold the first two select keys right here to the select buttons here, and then you power up the unit. It takes a moment for it to boot. And then you'll see that it has three different modes. Studio One mode, and that's its native mode. So if you're using Studio One, that's what you want to do. Uh, Mackie control mode. And there's also another mode that's uh, used by Pro Tools and some other programs called Huey mode. For our purposes, we're going to use the Mackie control mode or MCU mode here. Okay. Then we're going to go over to here where it says exit and just hit select underneath that. And that's booting it into uh, Mackie control mode. I'm going to do the screen record part of this um, just real quick. I'm going to go in here and um, go to my control surface settings. And here's where you have the Mackie control under control surface. And you have some controls in here. The first time you do this, you have button assignments and settings. The, the actual configuration here under um, assignments this allows you to go and assign which port that you want to bring these in so obviously I have a, uh, a fader port uh, connected to my uh, my computer so the uh, USB ports show up there so you want to make sure you use those and then here's where you make your button assignments and I have some of mine set up the way that make the most sense for me so I'm going to go into these in a minute and just kind of explain some of the things that we have there. But uh, all of those button assignments that you have here, some of these are pretty easily corresponding. Uh, like all these F8, uh, F buttons are all showing up on the uh, shift, shifted functions. And some of the other things are, are, um, are there and some are not. Some things don't really show up the same on the, uh, on the Fader Port 8. We're going to go into what, what those different things are. So we're going to go ahead and add a command. And um, just so you're looking up here, this is the button section here. This is where your button assignments are, and this is where you can select which buttons. Uh, so if you see up, up here, you see this is where um, I have all my different buttons, and these are the commands that are assigned. So I'm going to assign something to the inputs button. So um, the way to do that is just go in and select from this area down here the command that you want to add. Now. If you look here, there's a command and then there's a context. And what these contexts are, these basically tell you um, where that, that command operates. So if it's an application thing, it's something that operates throughout the, entire, um, throughout the entire app. If it's something that's inside of a specific panel, it'll show up right here in the context under that panel name. So titler panel or some of these other things that are set up that way. You can also search. So if I want to go in here and select Z for zoom, or something like that. I can go in here and go in and select what I want to uh, what I want to look for. So there's a bunch of different commands that I can select. So for this thing, I'm going to select the Zoom tool because that's a tool that I use quite a bit, and uh, I always have to go up to the uh, to the menu to grab it. So I'm going to go ahead and select that. Now the way you assign it, it's a little weird, but you you click on it, you hold, 
and then you slide it up here and just drag it to the what you want to assign it to. Click OK and OK. Another button is assigned. So now when I hit the uh, the inputs button, you see here's my mouse there. It turns into the zoom tool and I can now do my zoomy thing with it. So I can do zoomy, zoomy, zoomy. There you go. So uh, very easy to do that. And again, as I mentioned before, it's a, it, this is just really great that you can kind of customize your workflow to um, to the commands that you do the that you use the most. So there you have it. Okay, so I have um, assigned the buttons, and I'm going to just navigate you around a little bit some of the things that we have assigned here. So we talked about the function buttons before, and how those get assigned. On the um, on the fader point eight, you'll see right over here in this section we have all of our function buttons one through eight, and for the just for the purpose of brevity, you know, experiment with this a little bit for your own button settings. Um, I personally, you know, the things that I need is, you know, frame forward, frame backwards, mark in, mark out, those kinds of things are the things that are there. So to, in order to use those functions, you hit shift, and you'll see anything that's in black then is, uh, is what you have active. So you have uh, inputs, MIDI, outputs, FX, user. I'm not using those right at the moment. What I'm using are right here is just one through eight. Also, what's available is in Mackie control mode, your, um, your audio channels right here are on the faders. So they're already set up and ready to go. And your transport buttons. So, you know, for basic transport control, all that stuff just basically lives right, right there. Uh, in One thing to know, when you're in Adobe Premiere, make sure that you have the, um, the transport panel uh, enabled by clicking on it. So if you see right here, I just click over here, and now I've got that uh, highlighted. You can see the little blue square uh, around the outside here. That tells you that it's highlighted. When that's happening, all those transport functions then become active. And you can see that um, my fades and my, my audio fade and all that kind of stuff were reflected on the, uh, on the faders here. So some of the things that I have set up in mine, I have F1 and F2 as my mark in, mark out. So I'm marking my in. I'm marking my out. So very quickly, you can see I can go ahead and do that. Um, I can also make cuts at different places if I want to. Um, just using, I have my, my F3 and F4 button set up for that. I can go frame forward. So if I want to go and uh, look at, you know, catch the beginning of a word or something like that, I can go frame forward and frame back and then mark my in and mark my outs based off of that. And this is really kind of a nice higher end way to work. So I can go in here and, and get it right to the exact frame without having to mess around with the mouse. And I can, I've marked my in and my, marked my out points on that, uh, on that screen. And this works also with other, other panels. So if I'm in this mode, you'll see that I, I have um, up here in this screen, the same functions are available to me. So as I'm working with this, I can go here, get to where I want to be. Let's say if I want to get the end of the word primary. There we go, and there's the end. And then I mark my out. And by having them right here, these, these work out to be really, really nice edit buttons. So as you're working with stuff, you'll discover that it's, um, it's really, really intuitive. After a while, you'll just get really, really fast at, uh, at doing that. So... Um, the, the functions that this adds is, I think is huge. I think it's just really, really nice to be able to have some, some more advanced control under um, some, of these, some of these edit functions in here. And I can also do all my, um, I can t chop things up and play things, play from the beginning, play to the back, you know, from beginning to end. I mean, all these different little, little functions can be mapped out uh, the way that you want to work. And that's what's kind of nice about this, is that the way it's laid out in Premiere, you can kind of set up what you want your workflow to be and save the, that information on your sessions. So as you go from one project to the next, these are actually saved as a project, uh, project preference. So um, anyways, you've seen how we have everything all configured and everything and how easy it is to kind of get up and running with the Fader Port 8. I really think if you're doing a lot of video work and you care about your audio and, and, and you're, you're doing a lot of stuff, especially if you're doing stuff where you're cutting up a bunch of dialogue, I think this is an invaluable device. 
And the good news is, is that it's very, very inexpensive. I mean, 500 bucks for something that does what this does is a pretty, pretty nice addition to uh, to anybody who's doing a lot of um, a lot of video work. Um, easy to set up, as you can see, and uh, pretty powerful. And uh, we're we're kind of excited to use it here because it, it allows us to have even in our small little space that we have here, it's allowed us to uh, to do a lot of really good work and not not take up a bunch of space with an audio mixer and have wires everywhere. It's just very, very simple, and it's very much designed for the guy who's doing a lot of work inside the box. So um, bye for now. This is Ted Bayhaus with TechRep Marketing.